everybody, and welcome to Taking Control, the ADHD podcast on True Story FM. I'm Pete Wright, and I'm here with Nikki Kinzer. Hello, everyone. Hello, Hi, Pete Nikki. Wright. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing really good. How's your Kung Fu today? Good? Strong? Is your Kung Very. Fu strong? Yeah. Very strong. I like, to hear. I like to hear that. I like to hear mm-hmm. going into a show with that kind of, of real big Kung High Fu energy, energy, especially because, yeah, because we're talking about anxiety today. But, you know, not anxiety in the form of, you know, having a doctor or a neurologist or any sort of specialist. No, it's just podcasters. But hopefully we're going to have <laughs> a good time with that. Um, uh, we are talking to uh, my dear friend, hopefully a friend of those in the community who've heard him before. Uh, Tommy Metz is back to, to talk to us, and we're going to talk a little bit about our upcoming season of What's That Smell? The Sometimes Funny Anxiety Podcast. Uh, I'm very much looking forward to that. Before we get started, head over to TakeControlADHD.com. You can get to know us a little bit better. You can listen to the show right there on the website or subscribe to the mailing list, and we will send you an email each time a new episode is released. You can connect with us on Facebook, Instagram, or Pinterest at Take Control. ADHD, but to really connect with us, like really, you got to join us on the ADHD Discord community. It's super easy to jump into the general community chat channel. Just visit TakeControlADHD.com slash Discord, and you'll be whisked over to the general invitation and log in. If you're looking for a little more, particularly if this show has ever touched you or helped you in your relationship with ADHD over the years, consider becoming a patron over at patreon.com slash the ADHD podcast. Patreon is listener supported podcasting. And with a few dollars every month, you can help guarantee that we grow the show, add new features and invest more heavily in our community. Just again, visit patreon.com slash the ADHD podcast to learn more. Nikki, do we have any news? No. It's a news free <laughs> week. Outstanding. No news. Outstanding. Did I say, <laughs> let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and call, call Tom. Hang on. Let me see if he's here. Tom. Where's Mm -hmm. Tommy? Cue the music. Cue the music. All right. Tommy Metz, the third. Hello. Hi. He's a... you're, I like that there's no news. I'm trying to think yeah. what's the opposite of extra, extra. <laughs> right? Go, go back into <laughs> your nothing, home. Nothing, nothing to see yeah. here. Nothing yeah. to see here. Uh, Tommy Metz, 30, is a filmmaker and storyteller in Los Angeles, California. He's directed the feature film uh, 30 Nights, and his latest short, Static, is going to be playing in festivals starting next month. And it's dope scary and makes me sad. Uh, we'll talk more about that in a bit. He's also an anxiety riddled mess and co-host of What's That Smell, a sometimes funny anxiety podcast about humans and their anxieties. He's here because he was dragged here in an effort mm. to follow up on the last time he was here back in May of 2019. Hi, Oh, pre-COVID. Again. Wow. Yeah, I yep. know. Those were, we What's were going only, on since you've been only here? talking about anxiety then. That's crazy. <laughs> exactly. Can you yeah. even imagine? Imagine a world. I feel our anxiety bubbled up and <laughs> covered the entire world like we did that <laughs> i'm sorry for that whole lockdown i'm sorry i'm not gonna lie to you that is in my notes not the covid part but just we're gonna we're, we're gonna talk about that so yeah you know but before we talk about some the anxiety stuff i think we're um you know when i i asked nikki before we started talking uh before we were planning the show i said what do you want to get out of a follow-up with with tom nikki do you remember what you said god i hope it's the same thing i wrote down well, I don't know if I remember. I remember that I told you about this whole story about my mom being in the hospital and how much anxiety I felt about that. Is that what mm. you're talking about? Mm, that was something for sure. Well, you said you said to me, you said, I want to know about the cannonball feeling when the when the anxiety store, like the instant mm. anxiety storm comes up and you get that feeling in your stomach where okay. you just suddenly can't function. Yes. Does that ring a bell? This is a different story that I was telling you about. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we have we share anxiety stories. It's very so many depressing, really. Stories. Well, but, and uh... you should give us an update too. Like, what what is your experience with with anxiety too? Just to get the people right. Up well, to speed. I know what you're talking about now. So yeah. there was a moment where I was sitting in the in my chair that I sit in in the living room, and my daughter was with me, and we were watching TV, and I just had this like feeling, and I even said it out loud. I'm like, I have this anxious feeling in my stomach. I don't know where it's coming from. What am I, what am I anxious about? Mm. But I just knew it was there because it was just this like knot in my stomach and I could feel it. I was uncomfortable and I was annoyed because I couldn't pinpoint 
why I was feeling that way at that moment. And it came on pretty suddenly. Like it was just like mm -hmm. all of a sudden I'm triggered by something. That's what we were talking about. And this mm -hmm. took me back to, to connect it to our ADHD discussions. It took me back to James Ochoa, our dear friend of the show. I know he's, we've been emailing with him, trying to bring him back, but he came and introduced us to this concept of the emotional storms of ADHD and his legendary storm, just so we're all on the same page was when he had, he'd released his audiobook and it had been out in audible for four years, but he'd never read the comments. <laughs> That's right. So I he didn't that. know. He, he discovered on one day that everybody was telling him, dude, you narrated your audiobook and read all the punctuation as if he was using dictation. And so he'd be welcome to the emotional storms with James Ochoa, period. I wrote this book because, comma, for many <laughs> reasons, comma. And, and that was that was the experience. He didn't know that that had happened because he'd never gone back and read any of the complaint comments. And uh, so he it, all at once, he was just overwhelmed with that feeling, that emotional Ouch. storm, right? Huge. And so we got to, to sort of talking about like, what do you do when that anxiety storm hits when you suddenly hit that sort of panic event, and you don't know how to address it, and can't move forward, and can't move backward, just can't move. And that's what Tom, I introduced you to last night, and you started making notes so furiously that you stopped speaking to me. So I wonder <laughs> if we can I turned into the serial killer from seven. <laughs> <laughs> Those that have the video, my, <laughs> I'm just writing in symbols. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Very small handwriting. Yeah. What do you think? How does this hit you right now? And I know you've been doing a seven, seven season anxiety podcast. And so maybe it's all fixed. Maybe you don't really relate to that anymore. I fixed it. Now when I'm in therapy, we're mainly working on her problems. <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> I actually just really went through something. Uh an exact uh, cannonball or anxiety storm involving uh, the short film that you mentioned. It was the first time that I've ever really made a horror thriller short. Mm -hmm. And it's a very different set of skills, audio wise, pacing wise, everything. And I was also going to edit it. And I was always, I'm always extremely excited about editing something until it's time to, oh, I don't know, edit something. <laughs> and I found that when I would sit down to start working, the amount of work and unknown that I had ahead of me, and unknown is a really big uh, thing for me, anxiety wise, um, uh, my hands would start shaking mm -hmm. and I would start to get a little sick. I noticed that I was saying, ow out loud that the waves were so even though it's just anxiety the waves were so strong it felt like physical pain and i had to push mm -hmm. uh that's one of my first steps in anxiety is <laughs> flight right yeah <laughs> <Which is not. laughs> but it just feels too i always call it too hot it feels too hot to touch mm -hmm. if yeah you want to mix yeah. all of our metaphors yeah. um and so i had to walk away um, and that's my biggest, if we had to really boil down my anxiety to one thing, it is anticipation. What? We it's talk the, more about we're, that. I don't, I don't. Sure. Care. It's the, it's once I'm uh, like, let's compare it to like theater. Once I'm on stage, I'm fine. Once I'm actually doing the thing, I will usually lose myself mm -hmm. in the work and my confidence raises up and I just sort of start enjoying it. Leading up to that is really difficult for me. Yeah. Actually sitting down and taking that first step because that first step is going to lead to the second step, which will lead to a scary step. And then ultimately I'm not going to be able to do it. And then everyone will not like me anymore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's the, that's the shoots and ladders of where it's all going to go <laughs> is I'm going to let people down. Yeah. Everyone that worked really hard, it's going to be on my shoulders. I'm going to blow it. And so that keeps me from taking step one because I'm kind of worried about step 10 in effect. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah, yeah I mean, sense. Nikki, how, like, I don't know. Tom last night told me something that I thought was really interesting. He, he said, what did you say? ADHD sounds cool. I wonder if I could get some, something like that. Like, <laughs> Yeah, it sounds really neat. It sounds really neat. I Tom does not, like, have ADHD, but I listened to him talk about it this way. And I think, wow, I feel like uh, that that's the the sort of call and response to ADHD, like emotional distress, if if I've ever heard it like that is exactly the feeling that I get when I feel like I'm I'm like letting someone else down and going into that absolute rejection sensitivity stage. Well, it's why it, it's why ADHD and anxiety, you know, they live together. <laughs> 
you know, they're the and, they're and depression comes in too, roommates. right? Yeah, oh, yeah. so yeah, three's you coming. He lives under depression. your bed. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but that's weird. He has his own bed, right? but he's always but he's under always yours. Under it's yours. So weird. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but that's. I mean, I think that's why you see those three so connected is because yeah. one can affect the other and. Um, and it's also why a lot of people don't get diagnosed with ADHD. They get diagnosed with anxiety and depression first mm -hmm. because they, you know, sometimes doctors will think that it's let's, let's see if this work or if this helps, if we treat this, but if they miss the ADHD, when they do have ADHD, the, treating depression and anxiety doesn't really help the ADHD. So the ADHD still gets it's still out of control. So it's a, just a mm. huge mess. But yeah, right. that's that's which why is what's interesting, because then when you look at the meds, right, I happen to keep them. I never take them. So I keep them on my desk, which makes me seem like really it's not good to just have drugs all over my office. But I do anyway. But what's interesting about that? I see is you've made a candy you, necklace of <laughs> what I need to take today. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. It's if we're going to get really serious good idea. about it, I'll just do the whole, I'll just, if you're yeah. on video, you can see the whole panoply yeah, of, a little jittery. Oh, nope, lost one. We've got one. To look. <laughs> so, so here's the thing that I, I find so interesting is that like, if you, if in my experience, if I'm, if I'm treating the anxiety and depression part, then the ADHD stuff is still there. Mm -hmm. I just feel more muted about it. So I might feel better, but it's not mm. making me finish stuff that I'm doing. It's not making me move forward. I just feel sort of- Doesn't help you get started. Yeah, it does, certainly doesn't help me get right. started. It just sort of mutes the highs and lows. And I don't feel such severe troughs of anxiety and depression that I might have other, otherwise had. I don't feel like I have to carry a paper bag around in the car because of the sudden onset panic attack. Mm -hmm. But I do- I don't feel any closer to getting out of the scenario that got me there in the first place. Does that right. resonate? Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Because if you think about, you know, ADHD medication, it, it, the stimulants, anyway, the ones that are stimulants are the ones that are helping you, you know, gain increase that dopamine that you need to get started on something and to right. focus on something. So, you know, an antidepressant, and I'm not a doctor, so I'm not like, this is just off of the cuff of personal experience and, you know, coaching clients that talk about this. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but that's the, that's the missing gap is that, you know, you can take an antidepressant, but it doesn't, it doesn't help you get started on something that you need to do that you've been avoiding or that's hard or has too many steps. So yeah, mm -hmm. there's missing pieces to it for sure. And I am a doctor. And one of the things that I've learned <laughs> is Tom is not a doctor. one of the things that I have to be, <laughs> it was just like a little disclaimer. Yes. <laughs> no one should ever listen to Tom. Um, the, uh, one of the things that I really have to stay very aware of that I've learned, but I've learned the hard way is that I can get very, I don't mean to use this term lightly, but I think it really does apply. I get very addicted to that really quick rush of relief when I say today is not the day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm going to do it and I'm going to do it tomorrow and tomorrow's going to be the day. And I get this real rush of boom. What I have to Remember, is that rush goes away now that I think it's I'm just too old to fool myself. It goes away in about 48 seconds. And then the slow creep uh -huh. of just mounting anxiety, knowing that tomorrow's coming because I'm compounding. Yeah. I'm making it worse. Yeah. Every time I push, I make it worse. Um, and I have to spend enough time in that uncomfortable feeling to remember this is not worth it. And I know for myself, I know what I finally needed really to get past the hump for um for editing i don't know if we're are we going chronologically do you want me to just tell you I'd, what it is i'd for love me? to hear it yeah i'd love to hear it. but i i just want to level i i just want to yeah. amplify that compounding you use the word compounding and that hits so home for me and as you i think you know one of my favorite quotes from one of my favorite movies of all time comes from uh david mamet uh in the movie the spanish prisoner and one of the characters mm. the great um uh, uh, characters in that movie says uh worry is interest paid on a debt that never comes due and right. i live by that because it, it reminds me that compounding interest is great in finance uh, when you're earning <laughs> it. But when you're just paying it out for, you know, for fear, uncertainty and doubt, then it serves no one. And the, the, the work that I feel like I'm doing is constantly trying to get out from under that experience of, 
of feeling this thing that serves no one. So I just want to add to that because that's a focused forward uh, thought, right? You're thinking the worry isn't helping me. But I also want to say to folks out there that are thinking so much about their past that that also doesn't serve you. Right. Mm. Right. It can manifest in any place and right. time. I can sit there all day long and think about how much better I was at something when I was in college. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's that's a, a real popular refrain. Well, in, and with in ADHD, P-10. it's not being better. It's like I can remember all the times I failed doing this. Yeah. Yeah. It's either you know? I remember when I failed then, or I remember, or yeah. I remember that just now I'm failing like right. immediately. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. All right. Hey, yeah. Tommy, Go it's ahead. yours. Tom. Tell us about editing, please. <laughs> oh, well, just, I won't tell you. <laughs> well, really, editing is the second time you tell us. No, um, what I wanted to say is because with the, to use your word, cannonball, with the anxiety storm, I also start to get very frustrated because rationally, I know once I start, it will be fine. I've never not finished something like it will be fine but then that smacking against the no it's too hot to touch and i start to get really upset with myself and then that doesn't help um and vodka and then um (laughs) numbing tools we've talked about that numbing tools but Mm -hmm. what i needed uh i needed two things it turned out to get started and once i started i never looked back what were those things i loved the editing process um number one was uh, there was a, well, I guess the only word for it is accountability. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I reached out to a friend who is also an editor and I said, I don't want you to come edit my movie. I want you to come over to my apartment for half an hour and sit and watch me edit this one scene. And I picked a very easy scene, like something just to really put like, this is going to go here. This is going to go here mm-hmm. because it forced me to not, I wasn't going to invite him all the way down from Porter ranch and then have him and then walk away. Mm-hmm. I needed, that was what I needed. He's really nice. So it was comforting to have someone there. I could say, how does this look? Which is in a way, do I remember how to edit? Yeah. And then the other thing, which took the edge off, um, which I, it took me a long time to learn because I think I had a pretty big stigma against it, uh, was I also took, uh, we talk about medication, right? You already brought up medication. Mm-hmm. I did take a clonopin mm-hmm. to take the edge off right. because clonopin doesn't, there's no recreational use for me. It doesn't get me high, sleepy, anything like that. It just quiets everything mm-hmm. enough. So those two things, a little bit of medicinal help and then someone here and he watched me edit for half an hour. And then I was like, oh, right. I enjoy doing this. I forgot. Mm. And he left and I edited for another two hours. That's great. And now the film has gotten into two film festivals so far. Yeah. So, I mean, clearly it worked out. Yay. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I, we call those, uh, well, accountability buddies, but mostly productivity pals, peepees. Those oh, are you have a peepee. Sure. You have a peepee. You had a, a productivity pal. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I'm not going to join yeah, you on this you you moniker. You know what? <laughs> you know what? It's a gift. You're right now, you're going to be all holier than thou and cool and say, I'm not going to join That's this. True. But as soon as we hang up, you're going to think, who's my oh. peepee for the day? And it's <laughs> never going, it's never going to yep. let you go. That's, that's a good point. That's the truth. And legitimately, Foster is my PP. Yeah, my look, at yeah. Yeah. look at him. He's that. working he's really hard behind you. Yeah, he is. He is. A little bit of a sociopath, Foster. So he also gets clawed up every morning. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so accountability. That's what I need. I need yeah. someone to sit down with me just for the beginning because I know once I get mm-hmm. into it, if yeah. that helps. At yeah, all. Mm-hmm. sure. Um, let's, let's transition a little bit to some of our experiences talking about, uh, talking about anxiety. And I, I have, I have bridged, uh, this show and, and WTS before, um, uh, we, I, I had a, a complete sort of meltdown about one of the episodes that we did. It's the first of our lost episodes of season seven when I did this episode and it ended up being just <laughs> terrible and sad and horrible. And I came and did a part of our member. It wasn't. Uh, terrible or horrible. It was just a different podcast. Yeah. <laughs> the sad, terrible, horrible podcast. And sure. so I came back here and talked to Nikki about it and realized, oh, my God, my anxiety is actually the experience of talking about it. And so we came back and redid that segment with me talking about the experience of talking about it. It was the stowaway story, which uh, right. will be coming out this season. And that is something that I that that I land on because of the what I like to think of the the contagiousness 
of anxiety. And I'm wondering what you mm. you well, you both have said to me things that sort of illuminate that we live in the same space around this particular issue. For me, um, I am a, it is remarkable to me how primed I am to receive anxieties, right? That someone can tell me something that they're anxious about or gift it to me and it takes me zero time at all to internalize <laughs> that thing and not let it go, to create that sort of perseverative thought spiral and and just really get to the point where I'm shaking and can't let it go and now it is forever attributed to this. And in this this specific example, it was the story of of kids and and people who are escaping very horrible horrible things and they do so by climbing up the the wheels uh and hiding in the wheel well, wells of airplanes while they fly long distances and many of them die and i did this episode with tom and it was a train wreck because by the end all i could think about was sad stuff and we are never releasing that version of it then i came and talked to nikki and nikki you said the same thing that you have to turn off news because it's so easy for you to personalize other people's fears and anxiety talk about that oh it just happened the other day my uh daughter was talking about um a friend of hers and some things that happened to her when she was younger, some abuse stuff. Yeah. And she started to kind of, I could tell she was going to start to explain what happened. And I said, no, 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 I can't. No, nope, don't even, Yeah. don't even tell me. Like, I don't want to know. Like, I'm yeah. really sorry. And I, I, and I, but I don't need to know the specifics because it's too much. It's too much because I either put myself in that position, like it happened to me, or I look at it and I see it happening to my daughter and that's worse. Mm -hmm. Like I just can't deal oh. with it. So, um, yeah. And it happens all the time, actually, Pete, because I don't remember what my husband said today, but he started to tell me about a story. Oh, I know what it was. This And it's so random. So I drink out of this cup. I have water in this cup mm -hmm. every day. This is what I fill up, right? Mm -hmm. And it's a metal straw. And I did it this morning. And and Brad said, oh, well, make sure you don't fall when you're drinking the water. Because did you hear oh, about that little crying. boy? And oh. I'm like, I don't need to know anything else. Oh, God. Yeah. Uh, did you hear about that little, that boy, little boy? Full stop. With a metal straw. I don't know what that yeah. is, but I, I can. It's I don't already know. There. I don't know the rest it's of the story, there. Tommy, because I yeah. didn't ask. <laughs> I just know it's bad. <laughs> so I do it all the time where I have to have, I have to stop people because it's just too mm -hmm. much. And then, <laughs> yeah, it's just awful. I think of it happening and, oh. Well, and this is the, this is the thing. I started doing a little bit of research on this and it's, it's funny. There's a, there's a spectrum, but generally um, the, the sort of therapeutic community says, yeah, like if you live with anxiety, it's pretty easy for you to internalize other anxieties that come along. Like if you spend too much time thinking about it, you'll spend too much time thinking about it. Mm -hmm. uh, hmm. And that is, uh, that is a, a, a sort of a terrifying thing. Then you get the other side of those articles, which, which say like, yes. You absolutely can like give anxieties to other people. Here's how to protect your brain. And it's just clickbait. And really, it's written by like the Harvard Business Review. And what business do they have talking about like the neurological aspects of anxiety? And so that is um, sort of the, the thing, like making light of this thing that we do live with when we live with anxiety, like this little boy straw story is, I don't even care what the real story is. I'm not going to sleep as well tonight as, now that I have that somewhere in my head. And it's just the reality. It's around every corner. It could be anything that it, that I could see that could just trigger it. So I don't know, Tom, I've been talking too much. What do you, do you have this? I have, uh, I maybe not as a raw nerve as both of you are, but I definitely live in a world of I'm afraid of things that I can't, I call it unsee, mm -hmm. but can't unthink. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm very susceptible to anything about animals being hurt, anything about children being hurt that digs in. Mm -hmm. And I start to not, and then I, <laughs> should I, no, that's dumb. <laughs> yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> and then I have this weird, we've talked about it on WTS, but I have weird moments. I mean, I watch horror movies all the time, so it's not like I'm a precious little person, but I have weird moments of over empathy. Yeah. And what I'm talking about is trash dog that I walked by a dumpster and there was a dog, um, stuffed animal sticking out of uh -huh. it. 
and I maybe it's because of the movie's Toy Story. I don't know, but either way, he lives with me. Now. <laughs> that, was, that was years ago. I had to take because I was like, I walked by and I was like, "Am I going to be thinking about him when I try to go to sleep?" Yeah, because I feel sad that he somehow. I guess I'm anthropomorphizing <laughs> him. You're doing great. And I was like. I'm going to. I now that I've said, am I going to think about it? I'm going to think about it. And I went back and I put him in the washing machine. I you know, trashed off that. With me. I love that. But that way also lies madness. I could be like that. Ra- <laughs> that mop looks lonely, and then I have like nine mops in my. Apartment. But see, this is this is I. I really struggle with this, and I, I'm pretty sure we talked about this. Like I have a thing about worms, and I know that I'm not alone with the worm thing. Like after a little bit of rain, I see a worm on the sidewalk that feels like oh, it's kind of washed up and it needs to go. I I pick up the yep. worm and I go. But I live. No, so see, in- I have the opposite reaction. Oh no! I live in stupid Portland, and when it rains, Ooh, the worm which rains doesn't a lot, live in my mind. <laughs> oh god, the worm lives in my mind because there's something about like my identity as a quote good person that saves lives, and and, and worms are the manifestation of that. But I walk down <laughs> our little path in Portland to walk the dog, and after a good rain, it will be littered with thousands of worms on our mile oh, and a half that's ride. like my worst nightmare and i i, I it's <gasps> so overwhelming to me i sit with that for days i could sit with that for days about all the worms that i couldn't say is that I'm so like sorry. right <laughs> like that's why i do an adhd and an anxiety show because i'll never <laughs> save all the worms even if i tried but i do feel bad about it so um <laughs> yeah it's it's amazing so uh I, tom um do can can do you have any now we've been doing the show for a long time now do you have any favorite anxieties that we've talked about that you would like to illuminate you mean that people have sent or anything I, that anything, we've talked about anything oh i have a long list do you yeah. i mean right off the bat it's my least favorite thing in the entire world. And I'm just, the only reason I bring it up because I've talked about it ad nauseum is that I have made no progress <laughs> in getting rid of it, of course, is my, uh, cause it's, it's an anxiety, but it has definitely, it has crossed the genre into phobia yeah. is my phobia of ants. Yeah. I have a deep fear of ants and I know now what I do. I was able to, someone was able to point out to me because I just recently went camping and there was a whole ant problem at one point is, is it that I, ants live in the wild? And you found yeah, them there was, and you were that insulted? I moved into their house <laughs> yeah. and I was like, Ooh. Right. Um, no, the uh, yeah, I have like these physical manifestations that I don't know that I'm doing and the psychosomatic of it lasts for yeah. an hour or something. Yeah. So, yeah, it's my least favorite favorite because it's fascinating to me yeah. that I have made no progress in 46 years about becoming less. Afraid you know, of what's interesting to me about that is that I feel sorry for you, Tommy, and I'll tell you why. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Because ants because are something sleeps in a bed of ants well, every night, oh and God, it's so no. comfortable. No, 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 no. <laughs> Sorry, but, Tom. Magic fingers. but I understand the phobia because I have that around snakes, and I think mm-hmm. about like sure. ants. What? Why I feel bad for you is that ants are things that you can actually <laughs> will see every. You know, you could potentially see every day anywhere you are. Like it does. Mm-hmm. You know, they right. they could be anywhere. Oh, I see. Tell Versus me. snakes. If you're seeing snakes every day, move and everywhere <laughs> yeah. like that. Like at least mine is a little bit more like controlled. Right. Like you know, I mean, granted, we have little gardener snakes sometimes, and I freak out. But even that I don't see very often. Like I don't, you know what I mean? So I, yeah, I feel mm. bad because that's like something that you just could easily run into. And like my phobia and kind of anxiety, it, it would be pretty hard to just always run into it. So anyway, I'm just giving you some, you know, empathy. I appreciate it. And also <laughs> snakes are kind of cool to be afraid. Of. I don't know. <laughs> like cool. snakes, snake spiders are more of like a traditional. Yeah. Sure. I get it. Yeah. Ants. I have yet to run into some, I have yet to run into someone else that is like, oh yeah, ants, I have to move. I have to brush off my legs. And then I'm itching my all arms the time for the next yeah. 20 minutes. Yeah. yeah. I have never met any. Oh, I've never said that out loud. I've <laughs> never met another person. Does that make me a special flower or the loneliest boy in the world? <laughs> You're a special flower. I don't know. You're a special flower. Yeah, thank you. We'll go with mm-hmm. special flower. Yeah. Uh, we've. What we've, about you, Pete? Well, we've talked about just on the theme of creepy crawlies, we talked about lice. That was actually a listener submission. Oh, right. Somebody wrote in and that was a horrifying, <laughs> uh, horrifying conversation. Um, yep. Um, 
but but the ones that I think are some of my favorites are the ones that deal with social anxieties and and the way mm-hmm. we interact with one another and the things that people are afraid of. Things that I'm I'm okay with now, like heart emojis. It's so funny how that is right. kind of somebody wrote in and and told us that they were terrified of. Um, of how they interacted with their boss because they sent a heart emoji that was purple and they read only after the fact that a purple heart meant that either you wanted a raise and you were greedy or you were very, very horny. And they <laughs> they ended up like totally perseverating on this point. Like they couldn't yeah. let it go that they'd sent that to their boss. And, uh, and I so- I had no idea there was such a thing of- Yeah. Color. There is a meaning behind meaning the color. Something. Yeah. It also wow. has we been went through a whole list. Oh, there's wow. a huge list. Yeah. Oh, because I'll have to microcultures to that and we'll have communities. to put that in the show notes because that that's very interesting. Yeah. It it is fascinating. And so there are these micro communities that come up around emoji use. Like the purple one has also been co-opted. I think it was who was it, Tom? Was it BTS, the, the K pop band? Um, and so now uh the purple heart can also mean you're a fan of Korean uh boy band music. So um, so it's really interesting there. There was one that we did. Well, there are a couple around how I am incapable of talking to people in public. Um, we did one on on I think it was net networking, the networking oh, episode oh, where, I, where yeah, I can that was to that. It was horrible. And you sort of helped me create a little like discover my inner like alpha networker. And it was a disquieting conversation. <laughs> Um, and then there was one where I was going on and on and on about how um, I don't know what to say when somebody when there's uncomfortable sort of like small talk, like at a Starbucks mm. drive through. How are you? I don't know what to say, because my first instinct is I'm still alive. Thank God. Or we're not living in the in the like post apocalyptic dystopian future of Mad Max. Uh, how are you? And Tom says to me, why don't you just say I'm good. How are you? Uh, in response. And that was a shock to me. I could not. He just made it so easy. Uh, and then at, at some point he called me happy McDoodle pants. And uh, that that sort of stuff. Yeah, 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 that stuff. <laughs> We've talked a lot about uh, online dating and uh, reply all emails that I think were was a real treat learning about right. people's real anxiety around reply all and the rage that comes up that is not insignificant when when you get a reply all email chain that won't stop. It is equivalent to road <laughs> rage. Like it just comes out of nowhere and you get furious. And what does that mean for who you are? But to the point about the kid and the straw, uh, we had one on uh, on basophobia, the fear of falling down. And it was around like running up concrete stairs as a jogger, as an athlete. And that's a real thing, like fearing for your teeth, fearing for all the things that could happen when you fall down uh, on your so face. So is that horrible. also because like one of the reasons why I'm afraid of heights is that mm-hmm. I'm afraid that for some reason I'm going to have this urge to just like yeah. jump. <laughs> like, that's actually, and not we talked, we have about, talked that. about that one. Yeah, yeah. Like, I am so worried about like even... Even like in the hotel, like if you're in a hotel and there's a balcony, there's there's this fear that I'm just all of a sudden going to like decide to fall. I don't know. What is that all about? We talked about that. I think that was even that was back in our first season. Like it was it was because that's a legit thing. And it turns out there is a percentage of the population that absolutely feels that when they run into a high place, that there is going to be the urge of what if. I jump off. Like, yeah, what is like what's going to happen? Yeah. Like, what what's am I going to land will on? I, like, I yeah, did that when I, I was in Hawaii. Car? I'm like, will so if I fell for some reason, <laughs> <laughs> this is where I would fall. I wonder mm-hmm. if I would die. You know, I mean, it's just, yeah, it's a crazy thought process. And it happens so fast. Part of it comes down to, I think we found out in our research, part of it comes down to a perverse version of control. Yeah. That if oh. part of you is afraid of falling, that one way to get away from that feeling of what if I fall, I'm going to make the decision. Yeah. Not to I'm fall. going to fall. If I fall, if I like the idea of if you're on like a tough ledge and you're having trouble, just that one control option is letting go. Oh. It's a terrible option. Right. But yeah. That's one of the things. <laughs> that's yeah. so interesting. Wow. It, it is. And and I think that's, that's exactly it. But this is one of the examples. This, this is the reason. So I'm always asked, why do you continue to do this show? Because like, aren't you just inheriting all these fears? But I absolutely live with that. Like, what if question? And as soon as we did that episode, 
I'm not going to say it went away. It didn't go away. But now that I've put words to why it's happening, uh, it is it does not carry any of the emotional weight that it used to. It didn't carry the fear. That feeling is still there, the what if feeling, mm -hmm. but there is no fear anymore of that I'm actually going to do it because, as Tom said, the answer is control. Like I am in control and I have agency in the decision. And the fact that 30, I think 35 percent of the population lives with this, it's like it's a genetic thing, right? It's a mm -hmm. it's a thing like, you know, how some people hate broccoli, like the taste of broccoli is terrible. Isn't that the thing or cilantro like you eat cilantro? cilantro yeah. yeah. Right. So, it's like that. Like there's a percentage that has this genetic thing, this trigger around heights and um, and that, you know, once you kind of have words to describe it, for me, at least it it took away, it deflated the anxiety around it. So that's why, like, I feel like we keep talking about these things because it like it helps to talk about these things. Yeah, it helps right. to figure out what other people are saying about these things. And and um, and so. Hmm. That's that's and then we talk about shows like High School Reunion. We did a whole episode on High School Reunion. Somebody how I avoid it. those. That was a that was a delight. Yeah, that, I think that was ultimately our advice is yeah, don't go to your yeah. High I school just reunion. avoid it. Never been to one. We have so we, I I mentioned earlier that season seven is coming. Season uh, seven, this, congratulations, this yeah. you guys! Right, we have a trailer coming up. So how it's many years fun. is this then? Like, did you start well, in two thousand and nineteen? I can't remember. No, we had started, started we, when we talked in 2019, we had, we were going into season three. Oh, That's, okay. Gosh. So, um, we waited yeah, way too so, long to have you guys on. We should have had you on season one, season three and season seven. But the problem is, Nikki, I was terrified of anybody finding out we were doing this podcast. I thought it would make us seem like weirdos. So it took three seasons to actually <laughs> to feel confident about talking about it, about yeah, your anxiety yeah. podcast. That yeah, totally makes, exactly. you know, that yeah. that's perfect. I love uh, it. <laughs> we we have a couple of episodes in the can already. Tom, is there anything you're really excited about, like previewing? Do you even remember what we've recorded already? <laughs> I, do. I don't. I'm not sure that you do based on that silence. <laughs> <laughs> I really like a, a nice tabula rasa. As soon as the uh, as soon as the podcast turns out, I just power down. Um, no, it's really I every season. I mean, it's of course it's a a uh, podcast about anxiety is are we going to have enough to talk about is this still going to work and there's always a little bit of again anticipation anxiety for when we start and it started off gangbusters it felt exactly like old times and it's always such a wonderful experience mm -hmm. our our first episode uh we've got a covid anxiety uh update from tom and i bring That's right. to the table uh anxiety about face mites so Good, maybe, i might right. i might include a little I might include a little uh, preview if you are interested in a little bit of episode one uh, that is on the way <laughs> from, for next season of What's That Smell. So um, anything else that I've missed? Nikki, do you have anything you want to talk about? No, this about? is great. I'm so glad right. that you guys uh, are here. And Tommy, you made it here as a guest. Love it. I we'll did. have to have you come back because this is great. We'll see you I love talking minutes. about anxiety and having like laughter around it. It just makes it yeah. feel lighter. So I appreciate what you guys do. That's hopefully, yeah, that's the what's that smell that's promise. That's right. <laughs> For the most part. <laughs> that and stowaways. <laughs> <All right. laughs> we're going to talk about that a lot. And now you're going to uh, talk about um, little boys and metal straws. Oh, so. God, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> so much to talk about tommy you are not gonna yeah. run out of topics no. <laughs> exactly um so tom i we've we pitched uh static that's the name of your film but nobody can see it yet because it's still going into the festivals right like festivals correct, we're not yeah. telling anybody yet but where are the what are the no. first two festivals it's good one in los angeles one in chicago correct or we're in uh scream fest la uh and then which is the longest running horror film festival in america and then we just just got into the atlanta horror film festival okay. both of those are going to be in october and we're just waiting to hear back from others but so far we're two for two which is very That's thrilling awesome. well if you're in atlanta or los angeles uh look for those uh, festivals go see tom's new film and of course yeah. melissa already posted the link to uh 30 nights website 30 nightsmovie.com if you haven't seen it yet uh it's it's super fun and uh so that's that. Thank you, 
Thomas, as always, appreciate you. An absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. Right. Thank you, everybody, for downloading and listening to this show. Thank you all for your time and your attention. Don't forget, if you have something to contribute on this conversation, we're going to head over to the Show Talk channel, which is in our Discord server, and you can join us right there by becoming a supporting member at the deluxe level or better. On behalf of Tommy Metz and Nikki Kinzer, I'm Pete Wright. We'll see you right back here next week on Taking Control, the ADHD podcast. Tom, how do you feel about your face? (laughs) I feel like this isn't the first time you've asked me this. (laughs) In what way, Pete? Aesthetically? uh, Functionally? (laughs) Um, I've had had face problems before. Of or, or, or related to your pores. How do you feel oh, about your pores? Do you well, we feel have, like your pore game is on lock? It's very, pretty good now. Very pretty good now. But for a one point, and I believe we have talked about this, I had cystic acne and had to take um, yeah. uh, carpet bombs of Accutane, which was incredibly horrible. Yeah. That was back. No, it uh, was not, not good. Yeah. I'm, I'm also a friend of the Tane. Yeah. Friend <laughs> of the Tane. P- pumped a lot of Tane down in New Orleans. Yeah. Yeah. So much tame. Um, what I'm worried about is I want to... Uh, oh, here it is. Yeah, I'm going to share that. So I just want you to look at this. We're gonna. I'm going to need you to describe what I've you're seeing. I've never not wanted to open something in my life. Is it going to be gross? No, no. It's oh. just a close-up of skin. That's oh, all. Okay. I'll just tell you so up front. Clicking now? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Ew. But yeah, it's it's not gross, but it's, I don't like it's it. skin. Yeah, it's very close. A little hair. Skin. Don't leave. Yeah. Whatever you do, don't leave the the, the screen share because this is in, this is important setup. Okay. Um, so then, if I move a little bit forward, do you see what's going on right there? There's someone is putting some sort of swab onto a microphone slide. That's not what that's called. Microscope slide. That, you're exactly right. They're putting uh, the substance. It is actually a kind of glue. Okay. Uh, that they are putting on a glass slide that is eventually going to end up in a microscope. And Great. then, uh, they're what are oh. they doing here? Ah, uh, there's a very pleasant young woman, and they seem to be putting the glue, the glued up thing on her forehead. I'm already starting then, to get a little nervous. Okay. Then they're peeling it off. Ow! Oh, it made a little face. Mm-hmm. So there's residue on the slide, and it mm-hmm. made a little face. And it's like a smiley face, isn't that cute? It is kind of now, like. What do you imagine they, that comes up in that uh, in that slide? The smiley face of residue that is now on the microscope slide. Um, maybe a little bit of like grease and like skin, dead skin cells or something. Maybe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think yeah. those are. That's it. Oh, we got. Oh, ah, what? Mm-hmm. We got lips. Oh, Ew. there we are. There we are. Wait, is now this of the slide? Actually, now we're going in tight. To, to the, the to skin. a person or the slide. Yeah, the, this is this is the skin. <gasps> Why oh, would you go so fast? What is that? What is that? It's a That's little a moving thing. It's a, it's moving, a moving thing. It's a critter. It's yeah. a, It looks like a cell, but it looks yeah. like it's a cell that's on the end of a tree branch. This is skin still. It is a oh, face. Oh come mite. on, a face yeah. mite. Demodex folliculorum. Demodex folliculorum. Oh, thanks, Mario. <laughs> this is this is a face mite, and this lives face uh, mite. on your face. And uh, this is the thing that oh. bugs me. Uh, my wife said this to me without comment. That was, <laughs> that was pretty good. If you missed it, I don't want to go back, but I'll just yeah. say I yeah. said it bugs me, and Tom said <laughs> literally <laughs> under his breath. And I just want that out there that it was pretty you're, good. You're welcome, um, com- comrade. <laughs> <laughs> these these creatures uh, live on your face, and they are actually Tom. They're arachnids. Moving. They are related to face spiders, spiders ticks. Uh, yeah, they um, they live in your face. They live Why? in your face. What do they do? Are they protecting me? So here's the here's the thing that's confusing about face mites is that you know Ew. you, you say face. that they are you know there are we don't why would we want these things living on our face? You're right. They all live on our face, like they're they're in there, but they are not parasites, oh. right? They don't actually cause any harm. They are what are they're considered uh, commensalist relationships with their, their human hosts, rather than parasites or parasitic relationships. With commensalist their human hosts. is that like parallel play? Like they're just doing it, their it, thing, and they happen to be on my forehead. 
Yeah, it's like symbiotic, right? It's a, it. it's that that uh, members of one species gain benefits while those of the other species gain no benefits nor harm, right? So, so we're not getting anything mite, from this. Okay, we're not getting anything from the face mites, but the face mites actually live in our pores, and Ew. they eat and digest the sebum. The, that live in our follicles. The sebum is not alive. It's like an oil I, that, that that they eat and oh. digest. And so they're like living then, clearasil. They, it's like clearasil, living with a, clearasil. clearasil with a face. That's right. Except for if you have a breakout, if you if they get out of control, if their population gets out of control, you'll get like a red rash on your face. If you oh. get a red rash on your face, those are the face mites. Demodex follicularum. Could that be where rosacea comes from? Because I had rosacea once. I, d- I don't, we I don't, don't actually we'll know the know. answer to that question, okay. but I do know that they live face down inside your hair follicles uh, yeah, and they well, nestle up against the, the shaft uh, okay, of the talking. hair <laughs> where you can't actually uh, see them. And okay. they are creepy, creepy crawlies. I don't like them. And so Ew. let's see, I'm going to scrub forward just a little bit. Oh, oh no. A friendly person oh, that's that looking same lady. At them. Here they are. Slide forehead lady turns out to be the doctor. There we go. The doctor was a woman the whole time. <laughs> so you can see <laughs> riddle. the main body of these things is uh it is has the legs. Uh it has the eight legs, and then it has this long like tail right on yeah, the back yeah. on the back end of it. And they that's how they align themselves <clears throat> Oof, against you really the going hair. quick. Oh, look at it. And they're ah! here, they're related to ticks and All spiders. Right. Now there's spiders and on the screen. eyeballs. Okay, what? Why are they related to eyeballs? Now, this is the thing. This is where I wanted to, this is where I really wanted to make sure. How do you get these? Go ahead and ask me, hey, Pete, how do you get face mites on your face? Hey, Pete, what are the chances you're going to stop saying the word face mite? <laughs> Was that the wrong question? Hey, Pete, how do you get these face mites on your face? What are you seeing right now? Baby. A mother is kissing babies. a baby. Baby? Yeah. Wait, it comes from babies? Uh-uh. No, I wish, God, like so many things, Tom, I wish we could blame the babies. No, we get them, we pass them on to our children by (gasps) rubbing our faces onto babies, and then they live on the baby forever. But rubbing faces on babies is like one of the top three things to do. Face mites, Tom. Oh, no. Face mites. Hugging, rubbing your face against another face. Anytime oh, no. faces get rubbed, you're going to be passing on face mites, uh, face mites to other people. That so, like, is Eskimo the kissing of the is... face mites. Oh, God, it's Eskimo, all face mite action Eskimo up and down. kissing is just a highway of bugs. <laughs> I just, I feel like the face mites have built like a little plank off of the nose. They're like, oh, but you're just going to jump onto the nose. Right. They're just ready. It's like a They're hob ready. lane. There's a, this movie writes itself. Is, the, is what I'm telling you. Oh, we're back to uh, bugs. So, yeah. So ew, this, is, this is, you can kind of get a picture. They're living, I'm showing Tom now a diagram. Tom, okay. would you like to de- try to describe the diagram, the the animation here? Sure. So first I'm feeling a little woozy and out of breath. <laughs> I am lightheaded. <laughs> I don't feel good. Lunch is af- for sure out the window. No, uh, it's like a, it's like a cartoon of a really close up of a hair cell coming out of skin. And then there's face bugs sort of inside Eating the yellow, Ugh. the sebum. Ugh. That yellow the is sebum. the sebum. They're okay. up against the the follicle, and you can Just... see the hair emerging from the skin. But what I love the most Ugh. is the little wiggly tails uh, uh, coming out of the follicles, and then they come out at night, and that's when they like mate, and then they go back in and lay their eggs inside your skin. <laughs> what? Yeah, this yeah. just <laughs> dialed up. Yeah, they're laying. Tom, I've been. Oh. I've been thinking about this um <gasps> don't make it for, since don't make since it uh since like uh, March when my wife sent this to me like I can't let go of this what's wrong Here's with your marriage thing. they don't actually seem to have an anus of any sort uh, uh, they, it is if anything rudimentary I think they just eat the sebum and it becomes a part of them and that's it I don't know how they get the, that's how they process. where God like drew the line persistent. yeah yeah, yeah that's they're, they're eating the your, on your face and you give them to babies but they don't have butts <laughs> great restraint <laughs> science <laughs> So that's, that's the face mite, the, the mite that lives on your face. And I this gets into... And it doesn't do anything uh, a, for us, though. Even though it's eating oil, I thought that that would be beneficial. And every time yeah, that I wash I, my face, am I is it like a face mite holocaust? 
I can guess, you wash them yeah, off? I guess there's, I guess you wash them off, but clearly and then I run not outside all of them. and touch a baby. Oh boy, oh boy! Because babies are always there, ready to take your face mites, and then I guess give it back. Because babies are a real face rub central. Like everybody's yep. rubbing the same baby. And in the era of COVID, <laughs> I think we're more right. aware. We've already been told. I think you should probably not be rubbing your face on right. babies right. just as much as you should not be licking right. anything, let alone movie screens and magic eight balls. From now on, every time I meet a new baby, I'm going to wipe it down like I used to do to my groceries in the beginning of the pandemic, Mm -hmm. (laughs) sort of vaguely and wondering if it's doing anything. I always have my little Purell wipe right here. I've never opened it. Oh, uh, it got that's, it at some effective. kind of a thing. And I always keep it here just in case. But in case of what? Now I know it's in case the face mites. Look, here's the thing. <laughs> Looking at your mites, researchers can usually tell something about your geographical ancestry, like what part of the world your ancestors come from because of your mites on your face. Oh. Face mites are definitely the species of animal that we have the closest connection with as humans, even though most of us don't know about them or ever see one in our lifetime. We still have this very ancient and intimate relationship, and it seems clear that we've had these face mite species with us for all of human history. They are as old as our species, as old as Homo sapien. That's like the grossest chicken and the egg thing I've ever heard of. (laughs) Like that chicken sucks and that egg sucks. <laughs> that sucks, sucks. Everything sucks about this experience. Yeah. That's what I'm telling you. So there is this, uh, the, you know, we've been hearing a lot about the, and I, we've talked about it before, about the fact that we as human beings are made up of just a bazillion pounds of like other species. Things hanging right? out. Yeah. Guts and bacteria and all this stuff hanging oh. out. And here's one that's actually a face spider living in my pores. And God. it is it's it face is a spider. perseverative thought spiral, Tom. I can't let go of it and I had to give it to you. I think about face mites every time I look in the mirror. I'm brushing my teeth. I have to turn around. I can't look at myself anymore. But is it like the movie It Follows? Now that you've told me, can you go on and live your life? And I have to. I it's hope like the, so. That's it's the, like the ring. Reason. I have to teach yeah. someone else about face mites, and on it goes, and on it goes. I hope to God that's true because I need rid of it. I need rid of it. I Ugh. don't. I don't care for face mites. I don't. No. I, yeah, I think there. You know, there are all kinds of anxieties in related to, um, you know, uh, disease, bugs, infections, those sorts of things. I haven't seen one that is a specific anxiety uh, for face mites, but. There should probably be one. Should we make one up? Yes. Fasche uh, <laughs> visage spider. Uh... It's got to be a phobia. Like Oh, yeah. Good fasce, point. What did I call them? Uh, Demodex folliculorum. So right. uh, Demodex follicular facephobia. I like that. It's so easy to remember. <laughs> <laughs> what a tongue roller. <laughs> boy, oh, boy. <laughs> Does this mean so that we should what, be going yeah. around pinching people's cheeks like grandmothers used to do? Well, they don't live in your thumb and finger, I don't think. But I think, I think you're, t- you're, you're giving them a little squish. You're right. Right. This is this is like the they live of, <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, of No, that mites. would mean we put on sunglasses and we could see everybody's face mites. And, and then, then go squeeze them. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Like, you know, does this like okay? How I'm did you end up in jail, Tom? Place. It's a long story. <laughs> <laughs> you, so when you're you're a kid and you go in the bathroom and you have a little zit and you pop it and it pops. Oh, you now what are you gonna think? I can you just destroyed a face mite that was just, in your pores. Well, what if we it can might be train drowning. our face mites to do that? Oh my goodness! Oh, if you could are train you gonna, your face are you mites, gonna, you're gonna face mite flea circus. That's I am absolutely. Right I'm gonna be like that old guy from Jurassic Park, and that's how I start my entire park. And then my face mites immediately breach the security zone and eat well, all the tourists. <laughs> Welcome to Folliculorum Park. <laughs> And, and it's just really small sounds. Where's that coming from? Oh, my nose. <laughs> <laughs>